At the Must Farm site near Peterborough, 40 wooden bobbins were found with 36 of them associated with single and plied cord ranging from 0.4 to 1.2 millimetres thick. One of the really impressive things about the site was the quantity of preserved textiles. Um, and that's especially considered that the settlement burnt down so that the preservation is through carbonisation in the main which suggests that we've only got a small percentage of what was actually present in the first place. And the other aspect of that preservation is it's that it, it appears that all stages of production are, are present within the assemblage. So we've got plant fibres, we've got yarn, and we've got the actual produced textiles as well. Finds of spinning-related wooden artefacts from late prehistory are rare, and we are not aware of any British Bronze Age parallels for bobbins or spindles. So as well as finding the textiles, we also found the equipment of or the artefacts of textile production. So there's things that you'd expect to find on most later Bronze Age settlement sites, like spindle wells and loom weights, but also there were the bobbins um, and potentially the, the fragments of a, of a loom within Roundhouse One. The bobbin dowels have been analysed to show nine different species of wood including alder, blackthorn, cherry, box, field maple, oak, dogwood, hazel and willow. So the thread was made from linen or flax um, but we also have on the site we have lime bast and we have some sort of coarse twining made from rushes as well. So, but they're predominant material was from flax fibres, which also means that we've got these um, fibre bundles, which is the, basically it's the plant fibres before they're spun into, into, into yarn itself or into thread. The size and range of the Must Farm fibre and fabric assemblage adds substantially to the quantity of information and depth of knowledge on late Bronze Age fabrics and fibres across Britain. The inhabitants of Must Farm wove textiles, twinned cloth and knotted their own nets. To do this people made threads and wound them carefully onto dowels of wood or into balls which were stored inside the house-like structures. It is this lively pattern of life that led to the presence of fibres and fabrics in the piled dwelling settlement of Must Farm before it burned down. The threads were first prepared using a splicing technique involving winding onto a slender dowel of wood. Two of these spliced threads were then plied together, possibly using a spindle weighted with a whirl. In some cases, plied threads were presumably wound off the spindle shaft and onto a ball. Spindle whirls were found at three of the five structures, corresponding well with the idea the inhabitants of these structures were involved in thread production. Textiles can be made from a variety of natural plant and animal-based fibres, all of which are highly flammable. It's likely any textile or products made of these raw materials would have caught fire, fueling the blaze, leaving only a few remaining artefacts. All the surviving must farm fibres are plant-based. Plant-based fibres are often more stable after charring than in their original form, which is why they have preserved comparatively well in their carbonised form. The absence of animal fibres such as wool might be due to the pH of the soil, which tend to survive better in acidic soils than alkali soils like those at must farm. The finds at Must Farm provided archaeologists with a range of British material similar to the prehistoric lake dwellings below the Alps, although chronologically most of the Alpine settlements are several millennia earlier, 4th to 2nd millennium BC. The distribution of the bobbins was a bit like the distribution of all the other material culture. We had pattern there so that some structures had more than others. So there were concentrations within Roundhouse 4 and Roundhouse 2 but there were some also present in Roundhouse 1. And there's a suggestion that perhaps the production of yarn was happening in some structures and the production of textiles was all happening in, in Roundhouse 1.